Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn about the third subtopic in Introductions to Organic Chemistry called Isomerism. The existence of chemical compounds that have same molecular formula but different molecular structure. When they have different molecular structure, means their physical and chemical properties will also be different from one another. There are two types of isomerisms. The first one is constitutional, also known as structural isomers, and the other one is stereoisomers. Each of them can be divided into further subtypes as shown on the slides. Structural isomers are those isomers in which the atoms are completely arranged in a different order in the same molecular formulas. These are the molecules having the same kind of molecular formula with different connectivities depending upon the order they are put together. The three types of structural isomer that we're going to learn are chain, positional, and functional group. Chain isomers arise because of the possibility of branching in carbon chains. For example, there are two isomers of butane, C4H10. In one of them, the butane, the carbon atoms lie in a straight chain, whereas in two methyl propane, the chain is branched. Let's check how chain isomers can be formed from a molecule. Given pentane containing 5 carbons and 12 hydrogens, Start by drawing the molecule according to the name if you are given one. If you are only be given the molecular formula, always starts with the longest carbon chain, which in this case, 5 carbons. This pentane is not yet isomers. To form chain isomers that focuses only on the carbon chain, shorten the carbon chain to become 4 carbons, while the one carbon will be the branch at the second carbon. Be careful not to draw branch at any end of the longest carbon chain because they are just the twisted versions of the original molecule pentane. This 2 methyl butane is now a chain isomers to pentane. If there is possibility to further shorten the carbon backbone, then shorten it. This pentane with 5 carbon capable to be shortened until 3 carbons. So we're going to have 2 branches located at the second carbon. Therefore, this 2 2 dimethyl propane is a chain isomers to pentane as well as to the 2 methyl butane. Now, try 2 pentanol with the same number of carbon as in pentane, but with hydroxyl functional group. Remember that chain isomers will change only the carbon chain, means positions of any functional group present must remain unchanged. The 2 pentanol has the longest carbon chain of 5 and the carbon number 2 bearing the OH. As for the first step, shorten the carbon chain to become 4. Make sure the OH is kept at the second carbon throughout the process. And since each carbon can hold up to 4 bonds, so you can locate one of the carbon at the carbon bearing the OH as well. There you go. Our first chain isomers of 2-pentanol is known as 2-methyl-2-butanol. By keeping the carbon chain as 4, we can form another chain isomers by relocating the branch of carbon at carbon number 2 to the carbon number 3 like this. Now we have another isomers of 3 methyl 2 butanol. The 2 pentanol is not capable to further shorten to the backbone as in pentane until 3 carbons due to the locations of this OH need to be kept at the second carbon. As for cyclic structure of cyclopentane, we'll start by drawing the cyclopentane a 5 carbon ring. Shorten them to become cyclobutane 4 carbon ring with 1 branch, then shorten some more to become cyclopropane 3 carbon ring with 2 branches. When there are two branches, means you can have more than one isomer produced here. Instead of having only one 2 dimethyl cyclopropane, you can have another isomers of one 1 dimethyl cyclopropane. In positional isomer, the basic carbon skeletons remain unchanged, but important functional groups are moved around on that skeleton. Given one pentanol as an example, the pentan referring to the 5 carbon chain as the longest chain, and the 1 O indicates the OH group attached to at carbon number 1. To form positional isomers of this 1 pentanol, the pentan should be kept as it is. Change only the positions of this OH to the second carbon like this. Since we have the longest chain of 5 carbons, we can form another isomers by relocating the OH group to the third carbon. Therefore, the isomers is known as 3 pentanol. This time we have 2 methyl 1 butanol, a 4 carbon chain with 1 carbon branch at carbon number 2. Q 
keep the two metal one butan unchanged. Change only the one O to become two O. Changing the positions of OH to another carbon in here will only give you the original molecules again because the numbering will start from the side with higher priority, which in this case the OH. So we'll talk more about this later on in specific chapters discussing the functional groups. In this variety of structural isomerisms, these isomers contain different functional groups. That is, they belong to different families of compound. There are only four pairs of functional groups that are capable to form this type of isomers. The first pair is between alcohol and ether. The second pair belongs to aldehyde and ketone. The third pair belongs to alkene and cycloalkene. And the last pair belongs to carboxylic acid and ester. The reason why they can form these functional group isomers is because they have exactly the same general formula. Molecular formula of C3H6O2 must be illustrated by either carboxylic acid or ester since it got two oxygens in here. Try to draw carboxylic acid with three carbon first and then fill up the hydrogens and oxygen. Don't forget to check whether the molecular formula is the same as the one given in here or not. The functional group isomer pair for carboxylic acid is ester. So the one to be changed in here is only the functional group of carboxyl to become carboalkoxy. Next, we have C4H8O. Usually, when a molecule has the double number of hydrogens from its carbon, it means there's a presence of double bond. But since we have oxygen as well, so we might say the double bonds comes from the aldehyde or ketone. Let's try to draw the aldehyde with four carbons and then fill up the hydrogens and oxygen. Make sure that the number of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen daily with the one given here, and then pair them up with the ketone with four carbons as well. Their functional group is still the same, the carbonyl, but their structural formula are different to one another since aldehyde got hydrogen attached to the carbonyl group, while the ketone got carbons in between the carbonyl group. Then we have C5H10 as an example. Doubling number of hydrogens from carbon and no heteroatom present, this must belong to alkene. Alkene's functional group isomers is cycloalkene, one with open chain structure and one double bond, while another one has ring structure with no double bond between the carbons. Last but not least is alcohol and ether. Simply change the hydroxyl group to become alkoxyl group with the same number of carbon and also hydrogen. Stereoisomers can be defined as the existence of chemical compounds which have their atoms connected in the same order but differ in arrangement in space. There are two types of stereoisomers that we're going to learn. The first one is diastroma, the second one is enantioma. The definitions of diastroma is rather simple. If two molecules are diastromers, they have the same molecular formula, same connectivity, but different arrangements of atoms in space. They are not mirror image and non-superimposable of each other. Diastroma, also known as cis-trans or geometric isomers, due to features exhibited by these isomers. First, the molecule must have restricted rotations of carbon-carbon bond. Second, each of the carbon should have two different atoms or group of atoms attached to it. We'll discuss about this more thoroughly by using example. Restricted rotations of carbon-carbon bond in diastromers happen at carbon-carbon double bond in alkene if you have open chain structure, while a carbon-carbon single bond in cyclic structure. Either one of these will limit the rotations of the atoms attached to it. Each carbon must have two different atoms attached to it. So this is carbon number one, they got Br and hydrogen. Carbon number two got Cl and hydrogen. As for cyclic structure, the carbon hold Br and hydrogen, the carbon hold the chlorine and hydrogen. If a molecule has two similar atoms lies on the same side of a double bond or the cyclic structure like this, the one highlighted in orange is the same and the one highlighted in purple is the same, they are known as cis isomers. On the other hand, the trans isomers features molecule with two similar atoms placed on opposite sides of a double bond. Just like this, Br and Br on the opposite side, hydrogen and hydrogen on the opposite side.
Enantioma is the mirror image stereoisomers, a non-superimposable set of two molecules that are mirror image of one another. The existence of these molecules are determined by a concept known as chirality. So what is meant by this chiral compound, also termed as chiral carbon, asymmetric center, and sometimes stereogenic center? In order for the compound to become chiral, the carbon should be sp3 hybridized. And then the carbon should have four different atoms or group of atoms attached to it. In order for you to know whether the compound is chiral or not, you need to check for each of the carbon present in the compound. Let's start with the first carbon down here. This COOH represents the carboxyl group. The carboxyl group got C double bond O, means this carbon is no longer sp3 hybridized, so they are not chiral carbon. Moving on to the second carbon, they are sp3 hybridized, and they have four different group of atoms attached to the carbon, means we could say this carbon is chiral. And then the third carbon here, we have sp3 hybridized, but then they are attached to three hydrogens, means this is not a chiral carbon. Therefore, we could say this molecule contain only one chiral carbon. Next, we have this example, a number of carbons, yet we still need to check for each of the carbon. This carbon is sp3 hybridized, but got three hydrogens around it, so this is not a chiral carbon. This carbon is sp3 hybridized, and they got four different group of atoms attached to it, so we could say this is one chiral carbon. This carbon is sp3 hybridized as well, and they got four different groups of atoms around them, so this is another chiral carbon. This carbon and carbon got two hydrogen and three hydrogens means they are not part of the chiral carbon. So means this molecule contains two chiral carbons. But for our syllabus, we are going to deal with only molecule with one chiral carbon. If you are about to identify chiral center in a cyclic compound, then you need to look for the difference in the path around the ring in each direction. For example, you have methyl cyclopentane. So you need to check at each carbon, whether they have sp3 hybridized carbon or not, and then whether they are attached to four different group of atoms or not. So as for the first carbon here, they are attached to three hydrogens, means they are disqualified to become the chiral carbon. And then for each of the carbon here, they are attached to two hydrogens by right. They are not capable to become the chiral carbon. So we are left with only this carbon in the middle here. We could say that this carbon is sp3 hybridized because they got four electron groups around it. But then, these two carbons is attached to one cyclic compound. So in order for you to know whether each path up here and down here is the same or not, then we need to have a point of symmetry showing that they have these two pathway. So by looking at both groups in here and also in here, they got identical groups. If these two pathway got identical groups, means the carbon in here is not a chiral carbon. Let's say we have another example involving cyclic compound. We are interested in this carbon here. And by having this point of symmetry, we're going to look at both pathway, whether they got same environment or not. So if we compare the two pathway in terms of the group present, they got different groups means if they got different groups this carbon is considered as chiral carbon enantioma can be represented in three dimension using wedge dash wedge line model so wedge line represent the bond in front wedge dash represent the bond behind and solid line represent the bond lies in the plane now we are going to draw a pair of enantioma for two butanol we need to first identify which one of this carbon will become the chiral carbon. So the first carbon got three same hydrogens, means they are not chiral. The second carbon, they are sp3 hybridized and got four different groups of atoms. So this is going to be our chiral carbon. Let's see if we have any other chiral carbon apart from the second carbon. This third and fourth carbon got the same environment of hydrogens, means they are not chiral. The one and only chiral carbon in this molecule is carbon number two. So by having this chiral carbon, we are going to apply the wedge dash wedge line model where we have this solid line represent the bond lies in plane, wedge line represent the bond in front and wedge dash represent the bond behind. Your syllabus do not require you to assign the atoms according to their priorities. 
So you can simply put them at the back. We usually put hydrogens in front. We put OH and then the rest of the line. We put the alkyl group, the CH2CH3 and also CH3. Since this enantiomer is the mirror image and they are non superimposable of each other, means we are going to have a reflection of this molecule on the right like this. Make sure the carbon is bonded to carbon, not the carbon to hydrogens. And then we have kind of tetrahedral geometry in here. So we have this slanted a bit to the right and then to the back in here. So there you go. This is our a pair of enantiomer for 2 butanol. That's all for subtopic 4.3 isomerisms. Thank you.